Hey, what's up guys? It's your man JB and in this video I'm decorating this room. I'm going to be using this Dulux Heritage Velvet Mat. Now, I have used this a lot in my house and I've got to be honest, it really is a lovely paint. So uh, the reason I'm using it in my bedroom as well. Now, we'll talk a little bit more about the paint as we go on and do some of the decoration or more importantly the painting but what I want to talk about first is the preparation of the walls. I have to tell you at this point there is absolutely no point in rushing the preparation if you're going to be painting walls. I guess it's really easy just to walk into a room and think yeah that looks okay, throw a bit of paint on and uh, hope for the best. Now what you'll notice here are lots of white patches where I've had to fill some small holes, some big holes, some, some big gashes and little dents and some cracks down the side here. And right now this is really super smooth and this is completely ready to paint. So what I've done with these is I've dug out any loose material. This is dry line so this is plasterboard. So I've just taken out any loose pieces and then what I tend to do is seal it with some PVA, some watered down PVA, just to ensure that the, uh, the substrate, the plaster itself isn't too porous when I put the filler on. So I've then just put some general purpose filler in the holes, but usually just doing one fill isn't enough. So after the first filler has dried, I give it a rub down and then I go over it with a plaster skim or a very fine filler and that just allows it to be rubbed down once that's dry and that really does give you a super smooth finish. But that's not where I stop because what you don't really want to do is to put new paint over any large areas of filler because the filler itself is still going to be quite porous. And one of the issues you can have is when you put the paint over the filler, a large area of filler, it can peel off quite easily once it's dry. Now, what you may notice here is there's almost some kind of watermarks um, around where I've put the filler. And this is because once I've done the skim or the fine filler and I've rubbed that down really smooth, I then go over it with the PVA again just to seal it and ensure that the paint, when the paint goes on the wall, doesn't sink in to the filler too much and therefore end up peeling later on in the day. Because let's face it, you decorate a room, you want to walk away. You don't want to come back a couple of weeks, three, four weeks later, and then you start to notice where it's peeling. So this is one of my top tips when filling holes. Now, something really small, something like this down here, this is a really small um, little dent in the wall. That's not really going to make a lot of difference. But if you've got something like this or larger areas where I've actually tried to level out the wall here, then you definitely want to put that on. So I can safely put the paint on the wall now, knowing that this is sealed and it's not going to peel off. Before we get started, let's take a quick look at the tools I'm going to be using for this job. So to roll the walls, um, I'm going to use this nine inch roller. It's a very soft uh, medium pile roller and this is going to be absolutely ideal for this paint because this is a velvet finish. You want a nice smooth uh, relatively short pile roller. So I've used this before in the past and I know this is going to give me a really, really nice smooth finish. So this is going to be for the main parts of the wall. Now I'm going to use a mini roller. You don't have to use a mini roller, but I like to use these in the reveals. I've got two Velux windows. I've got this window here. I've got reveals there. So I like to use a mini roller. But what is important that you choose a roller sleeve uh, on a mini roller that's the same as your bigger roller. I've also got my long uh, handled uh, mini roller and this has got a, just an old roller on it. It's very thin, uh, but this is my absolute go-to when I am painting behind radiators because unfortunately this one doesn't quite go behind without getting the radiator covered in paint where this one is so thin I can get right behind there and no one will see where I've stopped painting, which is always the important thing. 
And finally, I'm using a two and a half inch angled brush. Now, I like to use an angled brush. I do find that once it's all primed up and um, you've got the paint on the brush, you can really get into those corners nicely with this type of brush. Now, you could cut in with a smaller brush or a bigger brush, uh, but I find a two and a half inch is absolutely perfect for cutting in. Um, so this is just really my go-to brush at the moment. Uh, but we will check out some cutting in once we get started. So uh, they're the tools I'm using. This is the paint, lovely Dulux Heritage Velvet Matte Paint. You're not gonna know what color it is just yet, although this might give you a bit of a clue. So let's open it up, give it a stir, pour it out, and let's get started. So we'll just give this a bit of a stir. Always stir your paint, even if you think that the paint doesn't need stirring. Always use a paint kettle. Don't be tempted to use the tin. It's too big, there's too much paint in it, it's heavy, you run the risk of it falling over, and uh, it's just not cool. Make sure we get plenty of paint into the brush, and off we go. Now this paint is really smooth. However, to get a consistent finish on all surfaces, what I like to do is with the mini roller, just to go over this, to get rid of those brush lines. Just makes it look that little bit better. Now, what I would also say is don't worry too much about getting your cutting in absolutely perfect on the first coat of paint, because when you come back for the second, you can just fill in any small areas that weren't quite right. So you really don't have to use a mini roller, but it can just make it look that little bit better. If you don't do it on the first coat, I'm definitely recommending it do it on the second. So when cutting in, my advice is to start with applying the paint close to the edge, spread it out a little, then start to move the brush closer to the edge that you're cutting into. Now, what you will tend to find is if you go a little bit faster, you can get a straighter line. If you go too slow, it can become a lot more wobbly. Apologies for the light. It's always a little bit tricky. Filming when you've got light in the foreground. So uh, but here I've done the cutting in and just going over it with my mini roller. Like I say, I could do it with the big roller, but just rather do these bits, the smaller one. So here's the best bit. Once you've done all the cutting in, is you can go over it with your big roller. So 
So we need to get the roller loaded up. It takes a little bit longer when it's a fresh, new or clean roller. It takes a little while to get primed up, but only a few, only a few times on the wall, and then we're good to go. I'm in a little bit of a cramped space here, so it's just taking me a little bit longer to do that bit. There we go. What I'll do, I'll run the roller up this way, just so I haven't got these kind of steps. By rolling up and down, you end up with these steps. So I just go along this way first or after, just to eliminate that. Now the coverage on this, with this paint, is absolutely fantastic. I mean, this is the first coat and you could almost get away with not doing a second coat. But we always will. We'll always do that second coat. Back roll it a little bit just to make sure there's no areas of excess paint. Oh, looking a bit brown. <laughs> Always roll off the edges as well, if you can, because if I was to roll that way, what it tends to do is as the roller goes along the edge, it pushes and squeezes paint off the end of the roller. And then that's when you get a really thick buildup of paint here on corners, which you do tend to see quite a lot. And that's one of the reasons why you see it and why you get it. So I would always tend something like this. I'll just tend to roll it off the edge and that way I'm definitely not going to get any of that paint build up. There we go. Looking good, man. Just like with the cutting in as well, don't be tempted to start your roller right on the very edge because again, you'll get too much paint build up on the edge. And then when you actually go to finishing the edge, You'll end up with too much paint and it will roll and all catch on the corner and it will look all messy and you'll have to clean it up. Now this room in particular, you know, there's no real big walls, so it's all a little bit more fiddly with different angles of the roller and so on. If it was just one big wall, it would be straight up and down, going along like that, no problem, really quick. As I say, this is just a little bit more tricky, a little bit more intricate, but come round and do it with my left hand here. I'm going to get all that rolled in. I mean, the coverage is great. It doesn't look like I've missed any bits, but of course, when you do that second coat, and by the time it's dried, you do tend to notice a tiny bit, but go over it with that second coat, and I'll tell you what, it will look absolutely fantastic. There we go. So I've done the first coat on all the walls, as you can almost see. And I've done all the cutting in again. Now, you would almost imagine that this <laughs> is the second coat. The opacity of this paint is absolutely amazing. And the coverage, it just goes so far. But uh, it is only the first coat. So I'm going to throw a second coat on there. And uh, we'll see how lovely and smooth and velvety it looks. rolling it off those edges again so I don't end up with loads of paint on the corner. It 
it's so angled and with bits and pieces on these walls. There we go, look at that. It's drying really quickly. It's very warm today. And what you tend to find is when it's warm, it can almost look patchy where some parts have dried already. But um, no, that's all covered and drying already. Now with all the walls done and just applying the second coat of this lovely Dulux Heritage eggshell, um, I've just given this a little bit of a rub down just with a bit of 180 paper. As I said already, I painted this before the carpet went down. I haven't got to get right down into the bottom of the skirt in there, um, but I have taped it down so I can get quite far down. So there are just a couple of little scratches there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get this bit painted. Now, I am using a two inch brush to do the skirting. But what I would like to do, particularly with bits of skirting like this, where you've got a very thin lip on top, I like to use a sash brush just to get that top line because you can get the tiniest amount of bristles along the top there and get a nice crisp line along there. So I tend to get that first, being a little bit careful with this kind of skirting because you can end up with too much paint on this bit just here and then you look at it a bit later and it starts running. But uh, just take your time running along here. You can do this with a with the, whatever brush you are using to paint the skirting, but it does just make it a little bit more tricky. And as I say, this really does allow you just to get that top bit painted, and it really does give you a lovely crisp finish. So once we've done that bit I will take my brush and just brush all that in. I do just need to get the very end of that skirting painted at the top and that's where using an angled brush is quite nice because I can just use the very tip there to start it off. I just want to make sure I get those little bits that have been chipped. There we go. And then I'll come right down quite close to the masking tape there. And I don't need to worry about going too deep and particularly getting any of this dark paint on the carpet. Now, again, the coverage of this paint is just really, really good. The opacity and the coverage is amazing. And as you can see here, even whilst doing the first coat, it covers it really, really well, despite the fact that I had to use a slightly lighter undercoat than what I'd hoped for. So I'm just gonna run the brush along there again, just so there's no residual paint ready to run. And I'll just do two strokes along there just to make sure that's nice and smooth. There we go. Fantastic, that looks amazing. Just look at that straight line along the top of the skirt in there. So there we go, guys. We've now got two coats of the Heritage on the walls, uh, the velvet mat, and I can assure you that feels lovely and smooth. And then we've got the precious peat in the eggshell on the woodworks. So I've done two coats of that as well, looking absolutely lovely. Now these two colors do go really well together. They've been put together by Dulux as a palette of colors that all go really well together. And I just picked these two out 
because I think they just are absolutely lovely. And um, it's just going to give this room a really, really warm feeling. I think it looks really nice in the bedroom. Uh, I have actually done a job uh, similar to this color in somebody's office as well. So I think it would make a really good uh, combination of office colors as well. But uh, hey, you can go crazy and do what you want to. Well, that's it from me. I do hope you enjoyed this video and uh, I'll see you next time.